Hello, this is David Vallade with AltaVista Technology. I was going to do a demo today of Sage Intact, or at least I was going to give a, an introduction to Sage Intact. There's so much here that I could show. We have a lot of videos over on our YouTube channel or over at our website at altavistatech.com where we could show even more functionality. So we're only going to scratch the surface in this video today, but it was a way to just introduce people who've maybe never seen Sage Intact, what it's like to move around in the system, and just the look and feel, uh, just seeing so get a sense of how user-friendly it is, but at the same time, how powerful it is. So what you're looking at right here is a dashboard. A dashboard is a great way to start your journey within the system. You could see that I have uh, role-based dashboards here. And I love that way of working with the system. So this one is for uh, like a CFO. If I wanted to uh, use the system that way, I could have different rules here. There's no limit to the number of dashboards you can have, and they're all controlled by security. So people could have more than one dashboards, or they could have um, just one that where they are limited based on the role they have in the organization. The name Sage Intact is actually interesting. So Intact is short for internet accounting, and that tells us something. So some systems will allow you to be in the cloud and run your application through a browser, uh, but others give you maybe a choice or require you to have your server somewhere where you maintain it. Well, Sage Intact, like the name implies, is Intact Internet Accounting. It's strictly in the cloud. So it is managed for us by the folks at Sage. So they do four upgrades a year where they give new functionality, add new features that happens without us having to do anything, without having to lift a finger. Uh, every quarter, we know the dates ahead of time and we can see what's coming and we get it, get these great features as the system improves uh, throughout the year. Also, don't be alarmed if you see an old date here. So what I've done here is I've backdated my calendar a number of years. And I did that just because that's a demo environment and I had more detail if I went back so many years. But rest assured, in real life, that would be dated today. This would be real time. So worth knowing, you'll see uh, some old dates as we look at things today, but that's just a construct of the demo. The other thing you'll see if you pay attention to the little tiny wording up here is that this says top level. When I hit the little drop down here, you can see that I have security to see seven different entities, as I call them, uh, or companies, if you'd like to think of them that way. And I'm numbering them and giving them names, but that's all up for grabs. We could do whatever we want there. And we're showing off a little bit here because I have these seven entities that I can see based on my security. And as the name would imply, some of these are named after different countries. And wouldn't you know, they all have different base currencies, or at least a lot of them do. Which is, when you put all that together, if you imagine what I'm looking at here, I'm looking at the CFO dashboard that means, yes, I'm looking down on my whole organization over all my entities, at least the ones I can see based on my security, and I can see all this information about the financials all consolidated, all right here on the band. And these are all clickable. I'll make that example here in a moment. Why don't I switch to a different dashboard and we'll uh, illustrate that point. So what I've just done is I've switched over to the controller view. And this one looks a little different. So I can see different financials. These are all, if I drag that around, you can see these are all customizable. There's a little widget up here so you can control who can make changes. There might be security involved yet again, but you can do different things to make this visible or make it behave, really tailor it to your needs. I can get financial information like you see at the top. I can actually put a lot of things here. I can even do approvals. So I have in this example, approvals for purchasing and timesheets. I could have journal entries or expenses or any number of things. So I can actually use the dashboard, not just for information gathering, but also for launching different activities within the system. And these are all clickable. So, <laughs> and lest I forget, I almost skipped over this point, but this says profit and loss, actual versus budget. And this is a very skinny down version of a report, one that is one that lends itself to being on a dashboard, but if you think about that, I can make a financial report or any number of reports and just put them on my dashboard to see them at a glance. So I can make that really meaningful to me. Things I want to see and not lose sight of, it's the information's there waiting for me. Now, if I were a controller, I see something interesting. This financial report has a lot of good information here. And if I look at this revenue other, I can see at a glance here that we had 64,000 and change. That's really good for the month, I like that. And we had nothing budgeted. Okay, now, as a controller, I'm probably going to be asked by my management, hey, what is that? That's a fair question. And 
I should have the answer. <laughs> so let's find out together. I don't know what that is, but pretend I'm a controller. I saw this dashboard when I got my cup of coffee in the morning. I see revenue other, and I want to know more about that. So I'm going to click on that link. And I drill in, and sure enough, I can see a financial report. Now, let's pause here for a moment. Um, there's some accounting folks watching this video, I'm sure, and you might notice a few things. First off, I see an account number. In this environment, I have a five-digit account number, four or five digits, something like that. It's whatever you want it to be. And that's interesting. And I can see two transactions here. Sure enough, that foots, I like that. And a few other things here. Oh, I could export this. There's a little option here to push this to Excel if I wanted to do some analysis. Not a lot of detail here to warrant that, but I could if I wanted. View and print and customizing. Ooh, that's interesting, customizing. When I'm looking at this, I, I don't see a lot of information. And if I'm in accounting in particular, that one account number isn't telling me quite as much as I might like. So in some systems, what you might do is when you think customize, that might be writing custom code. Well, we have ways to extend the system that way if we need to, but by and large, we don't. So if I say customize, I have a whole lot of checkboxes that I can interact with or radio buttons or whatever toggles. And by doing that, I can actually change the report. So I'm going to change this report on the fly, and I'm going to add what I call dimensions. So if you could see this list, you'll see that I have ways to add more information to the account number I saw a moment ago. I saw in this environment a five-digit account number, but I also have a dimension called department here. So I'll add the name to the report, department name. I also have a line of business. I also have a customer name and a vendor name and an employee name, and items, and on and on and on. Again, if I were a nonprofit, grants and trusts, or if I was a construction company, I could have jobs and cost codes and cost types and any number of things. These are all dimensions to me. And I'll just add a handful here. I don't want to belabor the point, but if I add a few things, like maybe a customer name too, I can say done, and hey, I just programmed a report, sort of, and I'll hit view and go right back to the report that I was on a moment ago. I could have added all the dimensions, but I've added just those three, and you can see those there right here. That's pretty powerful, right? That means if I want to add something like a project or a department, in subsystems, I have to touch every account number to make that. They're all discrete account numbers. Here they operate independently. So easy to manage. So great. And I get all the flexibility being able to report on it. Well, in this example, I thought my boss was going to ask me what's in here, and it looks like it's mostly this $50,000. So I want to drill in on that yet again. Now that I've drilled in, I can see that this transaction started its life as an invoice. I can see it has a due date coming up. I can see what the original amount was. I can see it was partially paid. Paid by check. If I want to click in on that, I can drill in and see the check number. I can even see more, like I can see the audit trail code of who made this transaction and when, and whether it was modified or changed in any way after it was posted. And I can scroll down and I could see no attachments, but I could have one. And I could see the accounting on there and the memo is labor for that secret project. Oh, that rings a bell, I might think, as a controller. I can tell the boss exactly what this was. Hmm, but I noticed there's no attachment there, so maybe I want to communicate to my team that they overlooked something. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go down to this collaborate, and let's say I'm going to reach out to myself, David Vallade. I'm just going to hit the little at symbol and pick my name. Where's the attachment? Like so, and I can share that, that out. Uh, I could actually address that to anyone in the organization, and I can ask a question. We can have a whole conversation right here on the document. This technology might be changing as we go forward, but at this moment in time, we're using something called Chatter in salesforce.com, but we call it Collaborate, and it's included for all Sage and Intact subscribers. If I had an attachment, I could drag that on right now, and then I can post this and off I go. Well, let's take a look. Let's take stock of what we just saw here. I'm at the invoice. I can see everything. I saw the memo. Oh, that cleared it up for me. I made a comment. I could do an attachment. That's great. But I'm going to hit cancel and just say, okay, I am answered my question. That takes me back to this report that I was on, where we modified that together. And I'm going to dismiss that. And that takes me back to the dashboard where I started it all. And to me, that's the dream, isn't it? You start out at this high level. Things are happening so quickly in real life and moving so fast that it's hard to keep up with all the changes. So being able to see something, drill, drill, see something, ask a question, make a correction, and then move. Like that's the ideal way of uh, working in a fast-paced accounting world. So I hope this made some sense. I hope you got a lot out of this and learned a little bit about Sage Intact. But believe me, we have so much more. 
Give us a shout over at altavistatech.com if you'd like to talk to one of our professionals about learning more, maybe seeing a live demo, or look at some of our video content online if you have any other questions. Thanks a lot and hope to hear from you soon.